Welcome back to the season season show by Bill's Life. I am Rog Josh. I'm in here with Zach Mac Noble joining us tonight. Tonight, former Wichita, Wichita State Sure, New York Nick, former Washington Wizard Ron Baker. Baker, what's up, brother? Thanks for joining, for joining us tonight. Guys, this is great. You excited my uh, day on this lovely November fourth. <laughs> so, we need to catch up with you. What does a day in the life? of Ron Baker look like right now? Uh, right now is uh, physical therapy, more physical therapy, <laughs> and reading. That's about it. Shit, man. You been uh, hurt a little bit more lately, or what, what's going on? Yeah, I had hip surgery uh, about nine weeks ago. Had a oh, man. Bone spurs in there, just from wear and tear. Yeah. Okay. Studies, studies show you pay, play sports for 27 years. You're bound to <laughs> need something fixed. Right. Yeah. So while uh, you're reading, I recently picked picked up some books. What books books are you reading? I hated reading like same, same. high school, junior high. I read some of the Harry Potters like in elementary, just because my mom was my teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, but recently, I started reading some of like John Gordon stuff. John? I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. My I've heard of him. I can't recall it. Right? Solid, solid read. Uh, I just started Life. Life as life as a sport. Uh, it's not the same author, but that's what I picked up this morning. Very nice. Yeah, I was the same exact way. Like people were forcing me to read in school. Like I did read Chamber of Secrets, the Harry Potter, yeah. and then I had Holes one time, like fourth grade. Holes, and I was, yeah. Read that like five times. <laughs> and and then know, I was in, a, in elementary. Once the movie started coming out, I started you know putting the books to the side. Yeah, yeah same here. Same here. So are you in Kansas right now, Ron, or where are you at? Yeah, yeah, I'm in Wichita, uh, living with my old college roommate, trying to figure <laughs> out what's next for me. I like that. I like that. Too exciting, but, you know, with the times and what's going on, I'm, I'm doing all right. Okay, very good. So you got back from Moscow, what is it, in May, I was reading. Uh, that's the timeline yeah, I can so find. We, our season got delayed, or not delayed, postponed May, or sorry, March 7th. So we practiced for two weeks, kind of not knowing what was going to happen. And then finally, the league basically let us go home. I got to New York March 27th, ended up driving to Wichita, did a two-week quarantine, and I've just been here since. What was Moscow right. like? It was like one of the main points I want to talk to you about. Like, sure. you know your career in the NBA with the two teams that you played for, but like – me personally, only I'm starting to warm up to the, to the idea of traveling more in my life. And the older I get, the more I want to, want to experience the cultures, different different settings, countries, even even. What's Moscow like? Moscow itself is a beautiful city. Uh, you know, as as a kid or even growing up, you get this reputation from movies or books if people read them of Moscow or Russia just being this like enemy <laughs> or a place I'll yeah. never go uh -huh. there. You know, it kind of grows on you as you get when you're there and you obviously have to live there because your job consists yeah. of being in Moscow. It wasn't too shocking or too alarming to go over there. I actually enjoyed it. Uh, the only thing that was tough was just a language barrier. Yeah, I don't think they really teach a whole lot of English over there. So it was tough kind of going out in public and getting around. Mm -hmm. uh, but as a city, very clean, beautiful, a lot of culture really? over there. Like to put things in perspective, what the U.S. has been around for, I don't know, 300 years ish, right? <laughs> like we are so young. You go over there and you got buildings that have been around for a thousand <laughs> years. So that, seeing that was pretty cool. And this is experience to say I could go over there. I'm obviously very, very glad I, you know, took the leap and went over there for a year. So I'm a person, I mean, I've been to, I don't know, five countries or so, maybe seven, but um, rug, I mean, I like to go everywhere. I want to touch all seven continents. I want to go everywhere. I mean, I studied abroad in Australia for six months, did that bit in college, and me and my wife try to get as many places as we can. I mean, one sure. one big trip a year, whatnot. But Russia, I mean, that's definitely towards the end, and like you named it, I mean, it's definitely not something I'd say hell no to. I would say, right. yeah, but did we go to this place, this place, and this place first? But when I think of Russia, I don't think of nature and beauty. I think of no. architecture. 
Yeah, don't get it twisted. I lived in Moscow. That was it. <laughs> okay. Over there, you're in two separate leagues. So you're in your domestic Russian league and you're in Euro league. And you have one game of each a week. Yep. So I was only going to Euro league games. So I was going to the Madrid game. I was going to Barcelona, Tel Aviv. I'm going to the yeah. Euro league places. Going to dope, I'm dope places. All the nice cities. So, I never – I didn't go to very many Russian league road games. So – you know, my opinion on Russia is strictly basically St. Petersburg and Moscow, the two major cities. Yeah. What was the biggest difference, you think, in the A play style to, I guess, Moscow? A lot of guys we ask this question say physicality is the number one thing, but is that, that – does that true? I wouldn't necessarily say that's the biggest difference. The two things that I caught on to over there were there's no dif- defense for three seconds. Huge mm. deal. Yeah. So, like, picture, you know, Shaquille O'Neal standing in the lane <laughs> for an entire 24-second possession. That's I'd love to see washed-up Shaq takes, go there. <laughs> that takes a lot of strategy out of, you know, or into a game. It takes a lot of strategy into a game, right? So, so uh, like, what was that side, like, like out, out of goal? Say that again? It was, like, like, help side way too overpowered, powered, but. That's the thing. So if you got a five man that's just standing in the lane the whole time, your rotations are completely different. Yeah. So that's a huge, huge thing. And then obviously the superstar power that you have here in the league, uh, offensive, you know, offensive teams in the league that have a, you know, an all-star basically are relying on them a heavy amount of the game, probably 50% workload, let's say. Whereas in your league, you got different strategies each game and you kind of rely on teammates a lot more. So quality of play, I mean, the NBA is a 10. How far down do you think it is? I I mean, it's not much. As far as competing, the competitiveness is for sure there. There's some dudes that compete over there. Uh, Wow. I would say another thing is probably three-point shooting. So the space is a little – a little different. Uh, guys aren't shooting the three at the clip they are in the NBA. Um, uh, some, I mean, like you look at Houston, like a Houston team in the Euro League would just space you out and it would just be a wrap because they shoot the three at such a clip. Especially with a five that can step out and shoot threes, like the five guard in the rim with no defensive three seconds is just pointless now you got to go out there and guard somebody yeah you don't like you don't yeah with like marcus saw prime example yeah like there was talks about him going to your league like he would change that it's gonna be interesting back, right I, I hope he does i hope he does i mean it cool sounds like he's serious about it um all right he does seem real serious they already got a uh, oh uh miritich over yeah. in, uh barcelona like he was a big time signing for them and he can play the five and shoot the three. So he definitely changed the game this year for sure. So structurally, are they ran like an NBA organization? Would you say, I mean, it's a legendary program. I mean, everybody knows CSK Moscow. I mean, yeah, you're definitely treated like a professional. Uh, I wouldn't say um, you're traveling and your hotels and all the things you get in the NBA are, you know, the highest quality. Uh, Mm -hmm. A lot of teams in EuroLeague fly commercial. Uh, stay in obviously not <laughs> hotels like the you know name them the Ritz and the you know hotels of that nature uh, but you're definitely treated as a professional when you show up uh, Cheske would be equivalent to like the Yankees of the Russian League like they're the top of the top they bring in the top Russian players like they're they're the real deal they treat you like pretty special facilities probably not equivalent to you know the NBA but like Real Madrid they have legit facilities uh it just kind of depends on the makeup of your club uh, for example Barcelona Barcelona and Real Madrid are all owned by you know the guys that own the soccer team and the basketball team in the same format for us so it just kind of depends on the structure of your owner and how he has the club's uh money role kind of set up so, so- I'm like it go for it Ryan. I was going to ask you're so you're in Wichita with your college roommate right now. What's walk me through your best case scenario. You get a phone call. What, what are I'm guessing you're still working out. You said you mentioned you're doing rehab. 
are, are what your next goal is is would it be to go back overseas would it go would it be, be to hopefully get out another NBA, NBA team what's realistically your next step you think yeah I don't know who's going to be on the other end of the line but perspective wise I've had three surgeries in four years so yeah, yeah. basketball right now is really not in my future okay um great run very proud of all the the things I've gotten to do from a kid's game right yeah grateful uh to answer your question if someone called me man get me a job around business running a business growing as an impactful leader in this community serve others uh almost like a give back mentality yeah great business city uh they love their sports they really take care of you know guys like myself Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah i'm definitely waiting for that phone call i've had a lot of fortunate uh people here in this community reach out to me already sit down network you know do that big kid stuff that's awesome that's badass man that's like that is cool. that's a new life right it kind of just like on top you know, of COVID being around it makes it makes the transition a little tougher but yeah, yeah. Survive, you know mm -hmm. no i mean i'm sure the network's big and i mean there's plenty of jobs out there. I mean, it's right. You're so from a business aspect, you're, you're looking to get out into the business world, not looking to stay in the basketball world in any capacity. Yeah. By all means, I'm keeping all doors open. I mean, I'm right. sure it'd be nice to be like a friend for Shilla or a Jay Billis someday <laughs> in the basketball world. Uh, I don't have any experience with that quite yet, but you know, sometimes you just got to plant a seed and learn to grow. Yeah, this That's is practice right here. You're just on air talking, shooting the shit, talking about basketball. Well, be yourself. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really hard, though. It's hard to be yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, with that said, uh, what point uh, did you realize the NBA, I mean, you had to transfer out of the NBA and look overseas. I mean, was it your injuries coming down to it, or was it more so opportunity? Where do you, where do you think uh, – what came into play there and how did you have to transfer? Uh, to be honest, I had two options coming off my second shoulder surgery. One was with the Brooklyn Nets on a two-way deal. And then the other one was an uh, offer from Cheske in Moscow in the EuroLeague. Uh, two great options, in my opinion. Two options that, you know, some people may never get. So, uh, and honestly, financially, it was just made more sense to go to Russia. Uh, I didn't really know a whole lot about their, their program. So I had to study up a little bit. Uh, some of the guys that were on my team last year, uh, Mike James played in the NBA, uh, Will Clyborn from Iowa state. And then uh, just a, some, some good quality uh, Russian players that I got to study up on. And I felt like it would be a good fit for me to go over there, compete, show them what I got. Uh, fortunately, didn't have a, the greatest uh, showing over there. Uh, but like I said earlier, just an opportunity I felt like I had to take um, and pursue. I want to ask you about your hair, hair switch. Oh, yeah, dude. So in Western Kansas, the wind is. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you don't look like Ron Baker anymore. No. The wind <laughs> was blowing so hot in there, it just disappeared. So you, for the longest time, like, that was kind of like your signature style. style. Right, yeah. yeah. And, and then what went through your head when you're like, you know what, this is coming off? I'm not sure anything was going through my head. Went home yeah. for a golf tournament in July, and me and the younger brother, I don't know if you guys know what to do at a golf tournament. Usually you're surrounded with golf and 12-ounce cans. Yeah. <laughs> By the end of the night. Big golf for you. You're, you're buzzed. Lost a bet, and sure enough, oh, shit. the next morning. Wow. wow. I like stuck. it. I'm all for it. Yeah. I, you know, I Actually, you know, usually it was like wake up, shower, and then just kind of shaky, shaky, and let it do its thing. Now it's like, damn, I got I to gotta throw in about 10 minutes into my morning yeah. to make sure I don't look like a bum when I walk outside. I saw, though, that, that you had a sick Joker outfit the other day. Dude, that's probably the, the, first, probably the first Halloween I've actually gotten to like go all out in. 
<laughs> in the NBA, usually you had a game or yeah, you couldn't throw 13 tattoos on your skin because you <laughs> had to travel the next day. But yeah, I had a nice little low key party here in Wichita with some friends and got my Jared Leto on. Yeah, that, that looked really good. It was spot on. It was it was a fun time. You didn't get after it in college at all, which is out of state. Oh, man, not that I not that I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Right. Speak, so speak let's of, go. Yeah. We go had a, like we first started our show show about what four years ago ago. Um, um didn't really know what we were doing. We were feeling it out, and we started reaching out to players to come on our show. Mm-hmm. And your boy. The unproven Fred Van Vliet was our first ever guest on our show. Right. Before he got a fatty contract, before he even got PT with the Raptors. Yeah. And we kind of grew as a show as he is grown as a player. Now, now he's about to get thrown the max, maybe. And mm-hmm. we, we have ties with Fred. Yeah, he's an awesome guy. Yeah, dude. Probably one of the most humble individuals I've ever met. That's like four, four seasons all star for sure. <laughs> <laughs> four seasons legend. So let's go back to those college days. Speaking of you and Freddie, let's start out with um, all time backcourts. Give me some of your favorite college backcourts besides you two. Oh man, you got to first. You got to start with Aaron Miles and Keith Langford. Yeah, yes. There you go. Come on. Love that. Love that. Yo, you grew up in Kansas. You're Jayhawk basketball fan, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You, I'll be nice and I'll throw in Colin and Denny. You don't have to do that. But they, you know, they didn't do, <laughs> they didn't do much in the postseason. Yeah. They were fun to watch. I was a Kansas kid growing up, so I enjoyed mm-hmm. just watching basketball. Uh, you throw in, uh, you might have to throw the Texas boys in there. J.J. Abrams. And Augustine. And T.J. Ford? No, no, he was with Augustine? Yeah, Augustine. Yeah. That was fun. Can you tell I grew up watching Big 12 basketball? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I love it. <laughs> Ryan, favorite uh, KU backcourt? Mine would be Devontae and Frank, for sure. That's fair. Yeah, you can't go on with that. That's, that's pretty – that's modern. I'm a little – I think I'm older than, older than you, Ron. I, I – the person, person that got me to basketball, basketball period was Kirk. Kirk Heinrich and, and Nelson at, at KU. The reason why, why I wanted to basketball growing up. So, I've been – reading this book, right? And one of the things it talks about is you look up to someone, right? Mm-hmm. You look up to your role models. And those are the people you want to become. Kirk Heinrich was that guy for me. Awesome. awesome. And it, this book talks about study your role models. You know, they did it. They got a story. See how they did it. Sure. Mm-hmm. Dive into them. See what, see what, you know, gave them the drive to get to where they were. Yeah, I grew up watching that man all the time. Stunned. I when missed the game as a kid. I was upset, very upset. <laughs> my uncle lives in Kansas City. He'd always bring the poster every year home. I hang it up on my. <laughs> Love that man. Awesome. Love that man. Was it Kirk and Aaron Miles though? Mainly that was the backcourt. The overlap. Yeah, I, I think can't so. remember who. Oh, Michael Lee would have been in there. Michael uh, Lee. Guard wise, you know what I think of Michael Lee is Keem Warwick closing those in out corner and swatting yeah. shit. Oh. Yeah, that was a rough night, man. That 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 was rough. I I still remember it to this day. I was younger. I was younger than years. Ron, did you ever get even uh, a letter from Kansas at all? I mean, I know you were recruited by mostly smaller to their, schools. To their to their uh, to their I should say to their whatever the term I want to use here. They wish. Everyone, yeah, there you go. Everyone, <laughs> everyone thinks they didn't recruit me which is false. They, uh, they actually had a relationship with my dad and my dad was texting him back and forth. And we actually created a time on a weekend in the off season, late, late mid April to come up and play pick up with the guys and possibly create a walk on spot for me. So the narrative of them, like just straight up ghosting me was not, not true. Yeah. Uh, in case state, I think we had sent some film too, but, didn't really get much feedback back. Um, would have loved to play at KU, but I'm a big guy of, you know, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. I had taken my visits to Wichita State, and then the following week, 
I was supposed to go to Kansas and I was just like, yeah, you know. Then we give him a try. I like it. I got to ask you before we move on from Wichita State. I mean, it's pretty disgusting and daunting allegations on your ex-coach there. I mean, I got I got to ask, you got anything to say about that? I unfortunately, don't have much to say about it now. Yeah. I did see that a lot of the uh, boosters here in this community are, you know, supporting him, which to their to their what's my word again? I, I just said that you wishes they just, they gave you a. <laughs> <laughs> going back to the boosters, I mean, can you imagine? Think fourteen years ago, and then think now, like what. Coach Marshall had done there, like yeah, yeah. so. The, like them coming out and saying they support him, I totally get it. But my only defense right now is they weren't in the gym when those things were happening. So yeah. they got to understand where I come from as far as when I walk the fence line here. Uh, but there'll there'll definitely be a time where I think I'll get into more depth. Okay, it's okay. fair. So we'll go any more then. <laughs> I'm curious. So you're a small town Kansas guy, and you get an opportunity with the Knicks, mm-hmm. and the Knicks are are a prestigious, just like what would, what would you say, top three, top top four big market, maybe maybe even number a, two. A prestigious shithole. <laughs> what? What? What you say? I mean, in our time, I mean, we're. In the last 30 years, I just oh, oh, I'm just talking this kind of historically. Less than square guard, guard, Bryant's New York. Okay, he's talking the guard, not the Knicks. The guard. I'm just, I'm fucking. Yes. yes. So, what was that like? What was your first experience in the garden? And any, I guess, intimidation factors or any like, wow, I'm really doing this? I don't know if you know this, but New York City is not a rural area. Like there's there's buildings that are yes, I'm familiar taller than three stories high than your courthouse yeah. in Scott City. So, so no fields. No, no, no combines or tractors. Yeah, no, none of that. So I didn't really know what to expect. I had never been to New York City. Yeah, yeah. That's why buildings out in the White Plains, which is in the burbs. The burbs weren't bad. Similar to like a Overland Park. You know, okay, can, okay. Can smaller KC buys, right? Uh-huh. And the guys are like, yeah, you got to drive to the city for <laughs> game. I'm like, can I ride with somebody? And they're like, come on, man, just drive. So my first experience going to the garden, I'm literally sweating. <laughs> One, I'm nervous for the game. Two, I've never driven in a situation that I'm about to be presented. Oh, it's scary. It's a text. To harm you. Like, if you're not going the speed limit, you'll hear a horn every two feet. I'm just sitting there shaking. <laughs> Probably the most stressful situation while I was in New York was driving in that city for the first time. And then I pulled up to the garden and not knowing who the hell I was in my Sonata. Of all cars, I'm just not. <laughs> they're like, "Who the hell are you? You're not a player. Where's your range? Where's your Ferrari? What the hell's going on here?" You, you ain't even security pulling up in the Sonata. <laughs> no, no, didn't have my cap on or nothing. They had to radio in just to see who I was. Finally got in, and basically, the rate. The, I think the reason I got my fit with New York to start was just playing hard, trying to gel, do the little things. I mean, kind of like what I tried to do my first couple years at Wichita, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My only experience ever in the garden, unfortunately, was watching you versus Andrew Wiggins duel it out in 2017. Really? Yeah. It was basically Alexi Shvet and Andrew Wiggins, but you were, you were headlining that game for sure. <laughs> oh, I'm, I, thanks, man. Thanks for the pub there. <laughs> the, the, the game did go to overtime. It was, it was wild, so I went on a – I lived out in Boston for three years, went on a uh, three, four game road trip to all the arenas in the area. And every game, we got so lucky. Every game went into OT. It was, it was a thriller. Oh, man. You're not allowed to any, any more <laughs> NBA games, especially if it's a back-to-back. <laughs> right? Back-to-back. No thanks. So did you ever drive to the arena again after that? Yeah, once, 
once I did it <laughs> once, it was just like, okay, it's not that bad. Because there's like, there's only one entrance into the garden, right? And you got all the one ways. So once you figure out the streets that are one ways and it becomes a cakewalk, actually find a parking garage you can cut through. So just like anywhere else that you're new to, you figure it out as you go. So the NBA is all about opportunity. And the further back in the draft you go, it's the chances of getting that opportunity are less and less. So it's pretty impressive that you did find your way to get a pretty solid opportunity in my estimation. But do you think for the production you put out there, you think you got your fair opportunity in the NBA to showcase what you're about? I think, like you said, it's all about opportunity and timing. And my first year, that's exactly what I got. Did we win a lot? No. Did I play a lot? Yes. yes. And that led to, you know, another two great years there. Um, we had Derrick Rose get hurt. We had Brandon Jennings get waived. And I was the next guy up. So I, opportunity timing is a real thing in the NBA. And you just have to take that opportunity and run with it the best you can. Oh, and back to the draft thing. The analytics do show. You hit that second round, if you're not, what is it, like, the next 10 picks, like, your odds just drastically. For sure. Part of the reason is because some of these franchises are starting to draft and send guys overseas because yep. of the competition level starting to pick up over there. The EuroLeague just added two more teams uh, last season. So, they're trying to get guys that, you know, have that potential at a pretty young age. So that's probably why you're seeing that analytic shift. Are you uh, you, uh make the trip up to, up to the city city here? Kitty, that's where I'm located right right now. Like you mentioned Overland Park a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, went to the Chiefs game against New England. What was that? October fourth, maybe. This year, oh, you postponed the first. Yeah, I had a wedding on the tenth. Uh, my uncle lives in Baser, out there by Legends. Yep, yep. So, I have some ties there family-wise. Love KC, man, especially with what's going on football-wise. City yes. boom. You guys, you guys are blessed. I'm freaking jealous as hell. You got the LeBron James of basketball. I mean, of the NFL, for sure. You guys are yeah. set for life. Love it. Ten, year, ten more years. Yes. That's insane. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how that's going to play out, but as long as we keep winning and the city keeps vibing like it is, I'm cool with it. Yeah, how many I mean, titles you're predicting? You say Super Bowls? Yeah, how many Super Bowl titles? Man, the way Pittsburgh's looking right now, I don't know. But I'm still rocking with Patty. I don't know if we can stay healthy. I like I like two more. I like two okay. more. That's fair. I think that's fair. that's fair. Ryan, you got a pick? Out of 10 years, football's different than basketball. There's a lot of turnover. Yeah, I'll, I'll go three more. Three? Okay. Yep. Yeah. My only issue is when he starts making, you know, the 60 on the cap. Yeah, that's dangerous. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can't have an experienced defense with that on the, on the line, can you? You I can't. Yeah. The answer is no, unless you're finding the gems of washed up uh, old guys coming I mean, you in. You've got to draft well, which right. they fortunately have done all right with, but they're drafting <laughs> running backs, which yeah. you know, isn't a position that's too difficult to find with the talent and the pieces they have on that team. Are you uh, uh, you still watching the NBA? Like, you still pay attention to everything and everybody and what's going on? Going on? Yeah. Once you're in the NBA, you start putting faces together, and when you see guys, it creates, you know, flashbacks, and you yeah. tend to pay attention. Uh, this was the first season I got to, you know, bet on the NBA. So that was yeah. I I hate to to bring this up. I th thought about mentioning it, and I think enough time has passed where we can talk about it. I mean, we've already brought up the shit that's going on on Twenty First and Hillside here in Wichita. So I don't know. <laughs> we went there. We just so there's an NBA champion, a new a newly crowned NBA champion, Anthony Anthony Davis. Um, you guys have a little bit of a bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, first, first of all, go. <laughs> I, I love how you handled, handled it after. That's the only way you just got just got to, But man, man, walk me through through that. 
I can think of the play right now. Right now, I just know what know what happened. In the, was it was it help? Were you on help side? Somebody somebody got it wasn't even my help. Oh but no! Before, before the game, like Hornacek had been kind of you know kind of getting in our ass about how we need to like play tougher and like if you guys trying to dunk it, we got to take them out. Like top mod, like that was his motto. Like yeah. hey, we're not playing tough, we're not playing hard type of deal. Mm -hmm. And instincts just kicked in. My, you know, all state free safety mentality. <laughs> like, I'm going to take this seven footer out. Yeah. So when, I, when he hits me with his elbow, you can watch the replay. I'm literally like this. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, he just, he just lost it. like, I'm feeling all this, like, just gone. The side of my mouth is gone. I'm trying to, like, spit out teeth, and, you know, blood starts dripping. And Kyle Quinn runs over to him, looks me up. He's like, "Oh man, you're leaking! You're leaking! <laughs> you're <just> leaking!" <laughs> I'm like, "Man, my teeth." And he's like, "No, babe, your teeth are there." And I was like, "Oh man!" So I just walked to the sideline, you know, go get stitches. Pretty out of it. I wasn't. I don't think I was concussed, but didn't play the rest of the game. So the next day is New Year's Eve, and we have it off. I wake up, and this thing is just. You can imagine. You see the photo. <laughs> I just got the new iPhone X. The the first the, was it the X that came out with the facial recognition? Yeah, I did not know. The that first one had the facial recognition. Wasn't working. <laughs> I'm like, trying to figure this shit out, like oh no. And I just got it a couple of days ago. Facial recognition is not working. <laughs> Wearing sunglasses in the winter in gloomy <laughs> New York with a band aid. Two weeks later, to finish the story, we're playing New Orleans at home. <clears throat> and our head manager brings my jersey from that game. It hadn't even been washed. It's got blood, blood on it. He's like, yo, you want AD to sign this? Like, joking. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's joking, right? And everyone's laughing. I was like, shit, it's AD, man. Take it over there. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> a ball was up there in the locker room. Brings it back, and I'm thinking he's going to be like, yo, he didn't sign it. Da, da, da. Yo, 80 signed the back of my jersey on the three because I was 31. He signed it. That's funny. Signed his signature. On the one, he writes, stay healthy, bro. <laughs> You'll have to pray that awesome. someday. Oh, that's going, in the, that's going in the man cave for sure, right? Awesome. Love it. Um, was that one of the stories that stick out the most about the NBA, you think? Yeah. I had a couple good birthdays, but we'll save those for when we get drinks in KC or wherever yes, you're sir, sir. <laughs> Come on, unfiltered. Let's go. <laughs> this is how you get that big media contract. No, just joking. Uh, give me your three toughest guys you ever had to guard in the league. Uh, John Wall when he was healthy. Um, IT. Hell yeah. Wow. That's my guy. He was all pro my rookie year. Uh, weird thing is, I never played against Kyrie. He was always hurt. I mean, I easily could be in the conversation, but I never got to play against him. Was hurt, or did he look at the schedule and Ron Baker was going to come to town? Yeah, night off. <laughs> or he was, or he was uh, in New York, and he wanted to, you know, go out and didn't want yeah. to. I don't know, probably. Uh, a third one? Steph gave me a couple deep ones. Yeah, he's got to be up there. What was the difference in guarding IT versus John Wall? So my rookie year, my motto was like, I'm picking up full. I'm going to wear your ass out because I'm not going to be playing that long, right? I was playing right. 14, 15 minutes a game. So I'm like, all right, in the game, let's make this guy's life hell. I did that with John Wall one time. <laughs> He dunked it with his left hand on our center because Gortat hit me with a screen about the free throw line and almost killed me. <laughs> and then John Wall is probably the fastest guy in the league at the time. Two dribbles, dunk. So I didn't do that anymore. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. But IT was just – his first step was just straight line, and he was great with angles. He's good at getting fouled with his his body. He's selling fouls. He was he was a tough guard for sure. 
Yeah, that 16-17 season for John Wall and IT was one of my favorite NBA seasons of all time. For real. They, yeah. they both just went off and were battling dudes every night. The point guard battle in the league or was at an all-time high that year. Especially in the East. The East was really good that year. Uh, Gorn had a good year down in Miami. Uh, oh, man, who was uh, – dude, most underrated guard. You ready? Yeah. Let's hear it. Drew Holiday. Yeah. Every, a lot yeah. of people say that. I, I, I think it's getting to a point where he's not underrated anymore if everybody's calling him the most well, underrated. I'm sorry, he was talking 16-17. Oh, that, that's fair. That's fair. That year he probably was. Man, he's a player. I had the privilege to play with his brother, Justin, in New York. Dude, that family brings some standout kids. Like, they're all smooth. smooth. So pure. Yeah, they're, they're all three of those, their, their games. They had Justin and we had Ed on the show. Oh, and Great guy, man. Yeah. It they, doesn't get any better, for real. Yeah. Aaron, no, I, I haven't met him, but he, uh, he can obviously play. He kind of he kind of got like the miniature Drew kind of vibe to him. For yeah. sure, no, he definitely does. Um, I really hope Drew ends up somewhere where he can actually compete for a title. He deserves it after all these years, and he's just a perfect complimentary piece for so many teams. Right. You just can't, uh, especially the way he defends. You, he's a guy you can't not have. Like right. if someone, like if someone were like offer you Drew, and you're the oh, president, you of, grab that. Yeah, dude, you're not. You're not going to make an excuse to why you can't fit him into the puzzle. Right. He's, no he's one of few players that have a damn near max contract or really close to uh, that is worth that money that's not an all-star. Totally agree. Absolutely. So my last question for you, Ron, um, let's wrap up with this. Uh, free agency's coming up. Your boy Fred's on the market. If he's not going back to Toronto, pick one destination you'd love to see him thrive next. Well, it just depends on what Giannis does, to be honest. Because <laughs> if Giannis stays in Milwaukee, I think the Heat got to mm -hmm. at least offer him. As far as a culture situation, I would love that. Situation, yeah. Fit in perfect, without a doubt. I Why mean, that kind of mentality? you know Jimmy Buckets would be about it. The Heat, the Heat cool. have the money, so it's legit if they don't want to bring back Goron. But, like, right. I think there's an under-the-table deal right now of giving them 20 mil for one year. But who wouldn't rather have Fred than Goran Dragic? Right. That being said, too, I do think Toronto is a great, a great organization for him. I'd love to see him stay there just as much as I'd love to see Miami. Uh, Nerf, my goodness, it don't get much better than what he's done there. The, uh, the, uh, the city Toronto, Toronto Raptor. How about it? Yeah, that's going to be a thing. How bad do you want it? Will, Willie, says he's, Willie says he's for sure signing. We had Willie Cully Stein on. He said he's for sure signing KC. <laughs> Willie doesn't know what he's doing for breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> that's my guy. Willie's awesome. Willie's awesome, dude. Ron Baker, we appreciate you on the Four Seasons show with us tonight. Thanks, man. This is great, guys. Enjoyed it. Appreciate you, Ron. Best of luck uh, in your endeavors going forward, and uh, we'll, we'll see you on the other side. I'll be around, man. Just a phone call away. All right. Good luck with the health. Thanks, guys. Later.